Hello and welcome back to another Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that you can view, manipulate and edit all the entities in the model straight from the part tree in Oasis Primer? Today I'm going to talk about the part tree, which can be found as a tab next to models and under the keywords and tools options. The part tree enables quick navigation around a model. And as the name suggests, it is focused around part viewing and manipulation, but it is also possible to view other types and in fact, you can display the entire contents of the model in the part tree. There are various types of view, expansion and contraction available, as well as multiple selection and viewing functions to hand. This makes the part tree a very powerful primer tool. And for this reason, it is constantly available through the tabbed area here. Before we go any further, I'm just going to adjust the view so it's a bit easier for you to see the part tree. Alternatively, I could undock it by clicking in the button here but I like to keep the main display clear if possible. So I'll just close it by redocking there. I can use the quick find tool that I demonstrated in the previous top tip. And if I type in font and select menu attributes, which will be at the top, I can change the display factor, making this smaller, say something like 0.8, increases the font size and reduces the graphical display window. I can then keep and then dismiss. It will ask me if I wanted to save the settings. In this case, I'll just leave them as is. OK, and then dismiss again. I'll also expand out the side pane by dragging with the left mouse down here and then minimize the keywords and tools options. Now we're ready to look at the part tree. By default, you will see a view with all the parts within the model, or if you have includes present like I do, then all the parts will be listed under their corresponding include files. For now, I'm just going to turn off the include button and you'll see all the parts listed with their IDs and their names in parentheses. I can scroll through this list with my middle mouse button or selection with the um, scroll bar on the left. Selecting on any of the options highlights it and I can make multiple selections by holding down shift or with control, adding additional selections I can then right click with my mouse and perform any of these actions. For example, I could only these parts. You'll then see that the color has changed in this rectangle so that only the parts that are visible have a green fill and the ones that are blanked are red. You can also select one of the four default actions up the top here, which will be performed when you select with the left mouse button. This is similar to the quick pick approach in the main graphics window. You can scroll through the selections with up and down arrow as well. In this case, if I go for only and select, you can see me scrolling through the options here. You can select everything in the tree with select all and then right click and for example, unblank or clear your selection by clicking on the clear button. You can also access the traditional selection method using the select button here. For example, I can key in one, one, which will find all the parts ending in one that are 10,000. Or I could also key in a range as well. So for example, one, zero, 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 four to one, zero, 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 one, nine will highlight this additional range. Clicking on apply will then highlight that selection. And then I need to right click somewhere in that selection to perform an action. For example, blank. If I press R in the screen, I can reverse. And you can see that the colors change and now I've essentially only those parts that I just selected. <coughs> you can also use the find button and type in a string to search for, for example, wheel. Clicking on the next button goes down the list or you can go back up the list with this arrow selected. By default, find is case insensitive and will match both strings in the part name and in the number ID. For example, I can go for 1000 and it will match all of these 1000s here. You can change this behavior through the options drop down. You can see make find case sensitive. And you can also change the labels. For example, um, you could put name only, in which case the IDs wouldn't be shown and this 1000 would only match the names which have the 1000 in them. You can also change the sorting here. So make it numerical or alphabetical. Ascending or descending. For now, I'm just going to turn back on 
the label with ID and name as before. The other options in the option drop down allow you to change the visibility of the tree. For example, you could add and remove the lines here. So you saw those ticks disappear and I can bring them back. Those little gray ticks. You can also change things like how blanking is performed. So whether it's part based or element based. Auto scale is a really useful option. And I'll just demonstrate that now with only selected. I can click on a part and then tab up and down with the arrow keys. And we now see that those parts are auto scaled without me having to press A or AC here. As well as parts, you can also display some other keyword entities such as contacts or defined boxes. With the type option here, I'll turn on contact and I'll also turn on define box. Then scrolling up to the top, we can see those listed. And we can also see all the parts listed on the top level. To also nest them under a child called part, I turn off parts top level and we can see those there where we can readily expand or contract them. I can then expand these options and use the actions at the top here also on these entities. So for example, I could um, only on that contact or in the windscreen tide, or I can actually um, show them all. And this is quite a nice way of viewing all the contacts in your model and it's colored them for me. So I can see distinct contacts there. Similarly, I could bring on these boxes there. If I press U and um, unblank other things in the model, then you can see uh, that in the context as well. Notice that sketching these contacts and define box have added them to the entity list. So I can either toggle them off or reset my settings here. If you want to see a full list of the model contents, you can toggle to show contents here. You can then expand any of these and select on the entities for them to be only or blanked, for example. In contents view, the find button changes to become list and selecting on any keyword that primer allows multiple definitions of will open up a list view. For example, nodal rigid bodies, you can now see them all listed here. And we could select them and hold down control or shift and then we can bring those onto a keyword pane from within the list view. Notice though if I select on something that primer doesn't allow multiple definitions of for example a keyword for control then the list view doesn't pop up because you can only have one of these defined within the model. The contents view is also just really useful for seeing everything in the model. For example you might want to see how many contacts you've got defined and also what control cards you've got. You can see these things really easily at a glance. It also shows you the numbers of things like nodes or entities like um, shells if you expand the elements, for example. So it gives you a great overview of all the keywords in the model. You can also split the part tree listing by include or assembly. And I'm going to make a video specifically about these later on, which shows you some additional features that the part tree has. Note that you can also easily access the keywords for any of the entities in your model by expanding the options, right clicking and selecting keyword. This goes straight to the element beam keyword listing. You can do this for anything in the part tree which Primer accepts a keyword view for. So for example, there isn't such a thing as a keyword view for connections. So we don't have this option available for us. I hope you found this top tip on the part tree and primer really useful and look out for my next top tip which will cover the special features that part tree has when you're working with models with includes and assemblies. So see you next time.